Hey everyone, we finally installed exterior insulation on the glam shed, so check out how we do it. So we're in spring now, it doesn't look like it, but uh, hopefully this will be the last uh, snowstorm that we got for this season at least. And we begin by installing the exterior insulation on the glam shed and uh, this video has been going on for a very long time. Uh, you might actually see us work and you might see the house in the background and there's nothing. But anyway, the whole goal of this uh, season, season 3, which will be the last one, is that we finish the glam shed. So the glam shed will be done completely in this uh, season and we have all seasons on playlists if you want to see it uh, from the ground up from excavation foundation everything we have it on playlist why don't we jump to a little bit in the past where marcella was installing the flashing and she'll tell us everything about flashing related to what you see down here let's talk metal flashing so anyone that knows me well enough knows that i'm terrible with geometry and special awareness and all of that so having to create details like this one it, it's pretty challenging to me so this is what i did if you have the same problems i did my little mock-up on paper so with this one i have all the flaps and i know what needs to go under and what needs to go over for this one after having this template what i did is i created an actual template with a piece of metal flashing and it's what I had here. As you can see, it took me several tries to get it right. But look at the end. I think it, it turned out. Uh, it turned out pretty neat. I should mention this is a complicated part because we have like a, another level here. The, the metal sheet is not deep enough. So we're going to have another metal sheet in here. We're going to lift this so it goes shingle style. And then I'm going to have just another layer coming this way and just covering this one and then above the other one. I don't know if you can notice that we removed some dirt in here and you can see some fasteners. For beauty purposes, we're going to cover this uh, with, with dirt so it's going to be nice and clean. But the reason why I'm here is I want to show you this corner. I think it came out uh, pretty neat. So let me show you a trick so everything uh, stays uh, uh, at the same level. You have two sheets of metal. This is one, this is two. So the trick is one has to go under, the, then over, and then under. So if you notice here, under, this one over this one and then this one is going over this one so that's going to pull everything together and it's going to be pretty neat The first flashing had a few purposes. One is protect us against uh, insects. We don't want them in there. Protect us against rodents getting in there and making their house. The most important one is to protect the insulation that is coming from the concrete towards the structure. Protect that against fire because for that insulation we gave priority to the thermal properties because it's going to be underground but it's not so good against fire. So we're protecting it in two ways. One is we're going to have the defensible space where there is not going to be anything flammable against that insulation but in case there's something flying in case of a wildfire and it's going to land against uh, the wall then the aluminum flashing is not combustible so it's going to protect that insulation from catching in fire or, or from melting too much so that's the first flashing now the second flashing has two purposes one of them is well after that flashing we install the extension which is wood so this flashing is also going to protect it against uh, fire and the second one is because we just want it to look pretty what you see us doing here is we are applying intumescent paint to our extensions. We are using this one here, it's called Master Flame, and I like it because it's transparent and once you apply it, it's almost invisible. However, it creates this coating on the wood that if there's ever a fire and it comes in contact with all the heat, it's going to start expanding. It can expand up to 60 times its size, so it's going to create this char to prevent the fire from actually touching the wood for a very long time.
The most important thing about uh, exterior insulation are these purple things. Their name is uh, Seagirts. They are from Gladiator and they have a few properties that were chosen by us on purpose. So if you've seen our previous videos or anything, you might know that we are fire protection freaks. So one of the big properties of them is that they are fiberglass and fiberglass doesn't burn very easily. So that's one thing. Also fiberglass is very good uh, thermally so it won't conduct or transmit the heat or cold to the inside of the house. So that's what uh, it's important about these cigarettes but that said the cigarettes are basically to hold the exterior insulation in place. It has these little uh, grooves or whatever holes where we will insert a nice little tab and it will hold the insulation in place. These are also very important because they end up defining the width of our extensions and so we cut these guys exactly to the same width as the cigarettes so that when we actually install the siding it can actually run nice and smooth. So we're about ready to start installing the exterior insulation. But before I do that, you might have noticed that we installed uh, some extensions here at the roof line. These extensions are going all around the perimeter under the uh, the roof. Of course, uh, we've spoken about the extensions down here. We have the extensions uh, by the windows. And then uh, we also have an extension right here. So basically the whole goal of the extensions are to be able to give us a very sturdy uh, nailing uh, surface. Uh, in this case, this particular extension is serving two purposes. Uh, the sturdy nailing surface but also it denotes the transition between two kinds of siding on that side we're going to be having a vertical metal planks and then on this side we're going to be having horizontal metal metal planks initially we were hoping to install a stucco but if you've seen it's uh, still snowed out it's almost may so it's very difficult to work with cementitious materials when it's cold so that's it that's why we changed our mind to go with a vertical uh, metal siding anyway uh, long story short when we install the uh, siding horizontally we want to give it a uh, strength and it is recommended to have the siding installed at 16 inch on center so that's basically why you see our studs here at 16 inch on center however as I mentioned our uh, planks are going to be going vertically in this area so that means that we're going to be running our fairing strips uh, horizontally that way when we install the planks they will have a nailing location at uh, 24 inch on center that said uh, the spacing vertically is because of the mineral wool that we're using it's two feet exactly so uh, when we install it we, we use a mineral wool for example and then we stole the cigarette so that's the main purpose of all this stuff finally yeah, you might see that we have the extensions uh, here by the roof line that serves obviously two purposes we have the it, it, it serves as a good nailing uh, surface but also we're going to be filling all those upper cavities with insulation as well this way we are fully continuous uh, you might have seen our episode on the roof and with that uh, i think we're ready to start installing that exterior insulation I'm super amazed at how fast we are moving, which is super awesome. To be honest, we rarely run into this scenario where we're moving faster than we thought. So that's super awesome because we have a big house to take care of. Uh, but first off, uh, as you see here, we have the cigarettes. They're holding the insulation in place. But very interestingly, you might notice that I have two kinds of insulation right here. I have the first two inches. This is polyiso. And then the exterior two inches are mineral wool. Originally, we were hoping to do a full four inches of mineral wool, but the problem was we we ordered from Rockwool, we waited a month, two months, three months, four months, nine months we never got our order so we just kind of had to think about uh, what we were going to do so i decided okay why don't we just use the first layer the first two inches of polyiso which polyiso is the cream of the crop when it comes to r value it has 7.5 r per inch so that's 15 r in uh, the two inches that we have right here while mineral wool only has 6 r per inch so that's only 12 and by the way uh, when if you go to like let's say rock wool or somebody they will say oh yeah but it degrades it degrades 10% in uh, 10 years. So if you did the math, that is still better than 6R. Anyway, that's the reason why we ended up doing polyiso on the uh, first layer. And it's very important that we do it on the first layer because this polyiso is non-permeable while rock wool is permeable. So if, it, if we were to get any moisture behind this, uh, it would have the chance to dry. With that, uh, come over here. I mentioned uh, we were going to be holding the insulation with some tabs. So these are the little tabs that 
that are holding insulation and that's why we love Cladiator because it has that feature. Other Seagirts don't have that feature. We're also filling the gaps with spray foam insulation. Ideally, we will improve our technique for the main house, but you will see that in a future episode. And finally, this is how I'm detailing the corners. And uh, notice how uh, the Seagirt comes out four inches right here. And then this one comes out four inches. The reason I have them overlapped, so I have one over here, 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 come on, come down here 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 is because i'm going to be placing a fairing strip which is going to be made out of metal at the very edge right here and at the very edge right here so this is going to give me a very strong support for when we install the siding with that i'll show you that at a later time so most likely we will be done with this tomorrow We're super excited at the fact that installing insulation was so quick. That's a big bonus for us. And uh, with that, we're basically done with this episode. There's a couple things I want to show you before we close it out. The first thing I want to show you is here a lesson that we actually learned. We didn't know at, at the time. We have a little bit of poly ISO exposed here at the corners. Since we're big uh, fire protection freaks, we don't want to have this. We need to run the mineral wool all the way to the corner. So that's a lesson. And actually the other three corners of the shed have that uh, taken care of. And for the main house, we will also have all our corners be mineral wool and uh, next if you come uh, back here um, this is something that we kind of found out and learned as we were installing the mineral wool is we left this little hole here and the reason for this hole is for our downspouts so that way we can do concealed downspouts and the gutters will look nicer it will look nice and elegant so i'm uh, very excited about this detail uh, the next episode is going to be very very interesting because we're going to be doing a lot of e experimenting so back here we have some uh, straps and these straps are meant to be our furnish strips but typical furnish strips are made out of wood so really the key thing is going to be figuring out how to fasten them how we install the rain screen how we do the siding well the siding will be one episode more beyond the next one but anyway it should be pretty cool we hope you check it out because we want to learn from you as well and with that the final thing that we have to do is install the mineral wool up here in the transition between the wall and the roof but we'll just leave, leave you with a time lapse of how we do that and with that uh, thank you for liking consider liking and subscribing and we'll see you on the next one